Good evening, Facebook world, powerful parents, teachers, aunties, uncles, babysitters. Welcome to the live broadcast. I'll give you all a few minutes to join the line, get your notification, and then we'll get started. Do me a favor, those of you who maybe haven't joined us before, um, as you join the line, please say hi. Please make a comment. Tell me what city you're from, what country you're from. Um, I love to know who's on the line and where everyone's listening in from. Hello, hello. Hi there, Sarah Alderton. Good to see you. Hello, Kayleen. Oh, wow. Like two seconds ago, there was one person. Now there's like 23. It's amazing. Awesome. Hi there, Jody. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Kelly. It's school holidays time. I've, I, I've purposely tried to time this one. I was going to do it last week, um, but the South Australian school holidays don't start till, till next week. Um, and I know the Victorian and New South, Wales, New South Wales holidays are already a week in, I think. So I thought I'd kind of do it in the middle. Hey there, Ryan. Hi, Paula. Hi, Sky. Awesome. All right. Hey, Paula. All right. We're going to get started pretty quick. It's like, almost like they forget how to be brothers and sisters. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and... And they're so used to having their own space and now they're on top of each other and there's whining and it's, you just feel like you're always having to give your energy to diffuse the situation. And so do me a favor, please share this. Please go ahead and hit the share button. I'd really appreciate you doing that because I know there's going to be a lot of parents and children. You know, if, if, if the children can get more conscious parents and parents that have a few skills up their sleeves to get the results they want. Oh, are we still there? Something happened to my internet speed. It's never happened before. It just came back. Everyone's still here? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you for sharing. Lucy, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Hey there, Haley. Hello, Mother Hubbard. I see you there. You'll need this for the weekend. Seems the kids are going to be at your house, Mum. How to get them to stop whining. This is a... Uh, I'll hand over to you this weekend. <laughs> Hi there, Sally. Okay, let's get started. So... Remember that, you know, the messages that I always teach are always around being a conscious parent. It's not just about, you know, um, controlling the children, but more about influencing the children. I believe there's two different styles of leadership. Uh, one is leadership by control, which is Hitler-style leadership, and then there's, uh, then there's leadership via influence. And I believe that leadership via influence is so much more effective because it's empowering. It doesn't kill the child spirit in a controlling way. It allows them to be in control of their own choices while still getting the behavior that you want. Hello there, Christy and Carissa. I was wondering where you guys were. There you are right there. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so here's what we do. Now, Just I just want to rehash you. Some of you might have heard me say this before. It's a bit of a common theme that I, that I often remind everyone of is that Whatever we think, whatever we speak to our children about, when we speak to our children, we, are, we, we speak so much and so deeply to their subconscious mind. The subconscious mind only thinks in pictures, and that's where we develop our default operating systems. Okay, So when you say to your child, oh, stop whining, can you stop whinging? If you whinge one more time, what you're putting in their mind is pictures of whinging and whining, and effectively what you're doing is you're creating more of the behavior that you don't want. Okay, So this is, a, this is so effective. I promise you it is I'm not going to say it works every time. It certainly doesn't. We're dealing with people here and, uh, you know, they, they, they trick us sometimes. But, but it is so, so, so effective. So the first thing we want to do is bring their attention to the behavior that we don't want. But we never stop at that, okay? This is a technique that I call red light, green light. So red light meaning stop this behavior, green light meaning here's how to behave, not just stop what you're doing. Because in their mind, it's like, okay, so what do I do then? Stop yelling at each other, stop whining. Okay, but she's making me angry. So if I'm not allowed to yell at her, what can I do? How do I express how I'm feeling? And if you don't put the picture in their mind of the behavior you do want, then, uh, then they will revert to the only behavior that they know which is what you would what they were just doing which is what you don't want so there's a two there's a two step red light process and then a one step green light process so there's two stops and one go and here's how it works so just remember so when you say stop whining and you know stop calling each other names or whatever it might be um, that you are strengthening the behavior that you don't want if you don't then give them what to do so let me give you a few examples the first red light, so what you have to do is you have to name 
You have to give the behavior a name. It doesn't matter what you call the behavior, but so long as you are consistent with the name you give it. If you're going to call it whining this time, you can't call it nagging next time. You know, uh, if you're going to call it, um, you know, tattling this time, you can't call it, you know, whinging or name calling next time. You've got to come up with what, whatever name you're going to give every, uh, every one of their behaviors, okay? And so the first thing you do Every time that they show this behavior, because what we're doing is we're creating files that they store in their subconscious mind. And whenever they look for um, you know, a behavior to use to get themselves a result they're looking for, whether they're looking for a, a parent to give them what they want or to do what they want or a, or a sibling to you know, give them the toy back or whatever it might be, the child is also just like you as a parent. You're trying to find in your brain what you can use to get the result you want. Well, the child is also doing that. They're trying to look for files in nanoseconds in their subconscious mind to access the language, the behavior, whatever it is that gets them the result they want. And sometimes the only file they've got stored that they've got available to access is hitting the hitting the sibling or calling them a name or whinging and whining and pulling at your leg or whatever it might be, okay? So here's what you do. Hello there, Nikki. Nikki is on, she says. Hi, everyone. I see you all. Thank you. Now, so the first thing you do is you give it a name. So whenever they show that behavior, it would start with, okay, and you also start with your child's name if you can. It's, it's, a, it's a lot more effective. So just a few examples. It might be, um, you know, it could be something like, I'll, I'll just use my language because it's so easy to use my name. It would be something like Amani, that's name calling. Baya, that is whinging you know, or, uh, you know, whatever it might be that they're doing, okay? Uh, or Miami, that is shouting. So, and every time that they show that behavior, that's the name that I'll call it, okay? So what we're doing is every, so as soon as you do that, you see, if you stick to the same name, their subconscious mind stores a file in their little subconscious filing cabinet. And as soon as they hear you pull out that name, it's like you're pulling out that file. And so, you know, in, in nanoseconds, they go through the drawers of their subconscious and they pull out this file, this folder that contains all the information that they get fed from their parent or their babysitter or whatever every time they hear that word. That's why you want to call it the same name every time so that every instruction you give them around this behavior um, uh, is stored in the same file because if one day it's if one day it's whinging and the next day it's whining and the next day it's nagging and all that they've got all these different files and there's no consistency so whenever you call it again the next time they're accessing the wrong file there's only one or two bits of information stored there rather than ten okay and the more in the more repetitive the more exposures the subconscious mind gets to an idea or you know to, to any kind of information the more it becomes the default operating system it strengthens that neural pathway in the brain between where they think of the idea and they use the behavior okay and that's what we're wanting to do we're wanting to get them to the point where they're so consistent and common with this that they are that they um that they, uh, you know, it, it, it becomes default behavior. So the first thing is call it out, okay? So John, that's name calling. Mary, you know, uh, that's, that's whining, okay? Second thing is let them know what the consequence of their choice is, okay? So at the end of the day, here's the truth, parents. We cannot control them. We can't. At the end of the day, you want them to do what you want, but the truth is they actually don't have to. We want them to do what we want them to do, but they don't have to. They could at any moment choose to do whatever they wanted to do, and we actually couldn't force them. And if you're a decent parent, you're not ever going to literally force them or use you know, some kind of crazy out there threats or, or abuse to, in order to control them. So the truth is they can. So we always want to remind them, you know, you get to make your own choices. Okay, and we want them to know that at the same time as getting the behavior we want, we want to teach them about life. It is not our job as parents to just love them. I'm sorry, but my, one of my strongest beliefs, and I can't wait to do my TV show just on this topic, that it is not our job just to love our children. Loving our children is not enough. It's nowhere near enough. It is not our job just to love them. It is our job to lead them. It is our job to prepare them for how life works when we're not there and to give them so many exposures to every emotion they'll experience the rest of their life so that when those emotions show up in their life, they can handle them like a boss because the people who have messed up lives of adults are the ones who quite often were, were, were kept away from disappointment and kept away from 
or controlled and never never experience the empowerment of making their own choices. So one of the things we want to teach our children in this process, and school holiday is a great time to do it because we're around them so much, is the law of cause and effect. Yeah, it's a universal law. It's like gravity. Whether you believe in it or not, it exists and it will exert its force on you the whole of your life. So I'm about to, you know, let you learn what the what what the law of cause and effect is all about. When you make those choices, you know, that, that is the cause, you produce the effect. You know, for example, it's like if I send you to your room, I did not send you to your room. You chose to go to your room when you chose to hit your sister. That was your choice. I did not put you there. That was your choice. Okay, so that's the underlying fu fundamental we want to get across to them as a message. So you call it out. You call out, you know, that's name calling or that's whining or whatever. Then you let them know the effect of their behavior and that, that it doesn't work. You communicate that that's not okay, it's not allowed or that you don't like it. Okay, so for example, it might be something like, whining doesn't work with me or it might be um you know we don't allow you know we don't allow put downs in this family or it might be hitting is not a behavior we use here so if you string those two red light sentences together it's something like uh you know it's something like um uh i don't know amani that's name calling we don't allow put downs in our family okay or um you know or i don't know ethan that's that's whining Whining doesn't work with me. I don't respond to people who whine. Okay, so you're letting them know. You're, I, I'm, I'm letting you know what you're doing. And I'm letting you know the, the effect of what you're choosing. Okay, that's not okay. We don't allow that. Okay, then we give them, then we give them a green light. Okay, then we say, here's what you do do. Okay, so for example, and then we put it all together in a sentence. It's just red light, green light. It's so effective. The red light stops them in that behavior. Let them know it's, it's, uh, it's not acceptable, but then we give them the behavior we do want. So the last thing that we leave them with is an imprint in their subconscious, you know, at more information to save in that file for them to lock away in that folder that we're creating of what to do, not just what not to do, what to do, okay? So let's say, for example, uh, you know, they're whining. And so you would say something like, Amani, that's whining. Whining doesn't work with me. I choose not to respond to people who whine at me. What does work with me is when you ask in your normal voice and you are patient for your answer or something like that, okay? Or it could be something like, uh, say, for example, um, Baya, that is name calling. We don't use put downs in our family. If you're feeling frustrated with her, please choose some better words and express yourself more effectively. But name calling is not okay. So it's like you're allowed to be angry and you're allowed to express and to show your frustration, but using put downs is not okay. Okay, and then, and then if they choose the behavior a second time and they do it again, then we let them know. When you choose to call your sister names, you are choosing to have some thinking time. You're choosing to spend some time in your bedroom. Okay, so it's not, if, if I hear you do that again, this is what will happen to you. Just remind them they're making choices. It's not the parent that does something to them. Hey, when you choose that, when you choose to whine, you're choosing, you know, like say, for example, you've said to your kids, oh, you know what, guys, we might go to the park after lunch today. And now it's getting towards lunchtime and like, can we go to the park? Can we go to the park? Can we go now? Can we go now? And they start whining. Okay. You, you let them know, Jack, that's whining. Whining doesn't work with me. I choose not to respond to people who whine. What does work with me is you asking nicely one time. And being patient and if you choose to whine you are choosing to not go to the playground until tomorrow just to let you know okay so that all is so we're letting them know what you can do okay that doesn't work with me but here's what does work name calling is not okay but here's what is okay tattling is not okay but here's what is okay hitting your brother or hitting your sister is not okay but here's what is okay Okay, so it's just red light, green light. That's really the, the simplicity of it, all right? So just think in your mind before you just, to, while you're getting used to using this language as a parent over the holidays, and you're probably going to be exposed to a lot of whinging and whining, just think in your mind, okay, before I say something, let me get myself ready for this, okay? Because it bloody works if you just get it a couple of times, I promise you. And, and you know what? Your subconscious mind starts storing files as well, parents. So what happens is, when you address the behavior and you get a result, even if they just pause for a bit and they don't go back to fighting for at least two minutes instead of straight away, your subconscious mind stores that, 
that memory in your folder and remembers that that's the behavior that gets the effective result you're looking for from you. That's the language that helps you. And so it doesn't take long for you to automate this language because the more you store files and the more you see it's working, the more you use it, the more inspired, the, the easier it becomes to even remember to use these words because they become your automated processing system. Beautiful. Got, I'm just reading what some of you have written here. Okay. So, all right. So for example, you know, uh, I mean, just to string it all together, red light, red light. So red light, call it something, give it a name. Red light, that doesn't work with me or that's not allowed or, you know, whatever it might be. Let them know it's unacceptable. But then we finish on a green light. So what effectively we're doing is we're finishing on an empowering situation. What happens is it... It teaches the child that they are only one choice away from getting what they want. And that then empowers them. Then they realize they actually are in control. And, you know, when, when anyone, when any of us feel in control of our world, we all feel empowered. And when we feel empowered, we make better choices. We don't have the need to put someone down. We don't have the need to fight or to tattle or to whine or to whinge or whatever. So when you teach them the new behavior, you empower them to, to really be able to make that choice immediately. Right? And, and then as soon as they become empowered to make that choice immediately, not later, they, they don't have to work out, well, well what do I do? What, what, what behavior will mum or dad let me, let me do? All right? they, they know exactly what will work. They know you've just given them the answer. And so then they become more likely and uh, you know, to, to be able to use the more appropriate behavior, not only right now, but in the future. Okay, so that's it for me. I know this works. You might have to be a little bit consistent with it. Your, your kids might not be very familiar to, the, to begin with when, when this is brand new language. Their mind doesn't even hear it. It's kind of like you're talking a different, uh, you know, literally a different language sometimes. So just stick with it for 48 hours, all right? Just make sure you give things names and make sure you finish on a green light. Not just what not to do, but what to do. And for those of you that have seen some of my other videos, this is also a situation where you use the next time. I've, I've spoken about next time before, and if you're not sure about that, go back in my Facebook or I might be on my YouTube channel and go find the video called Next Time. I think I might have even called it the best words in parenting or something. But this is another situation where you can red light, red light, next time. So it's like that, you know, John, that's name calling. That is not okay in our family. We don't allow put, put downs here. Next time you want something from your sister, next time your sister frustrates you, please let her know this way or please use this language. So the word next time just mixes up the sentence for you. Okay, red light, red light, green light. That is it for me. As I always say, guys, this kind of parenting does take courage because you've got to be conscious of yourself. You've got to change your ways. You've got to, you know, remain so aware of yourself that you that you can change the files and delete some old files that have been put in your subconscious filing system by your parents and teachers and everyone else and now replace it with some new ones, some new files. So um, thank you, Christy. So, you know, as you do leave here tonight, please do not leave here the same person you were when you got here. Uh, make something change about you, whether it's your awareness, your consciousness, the language you use, the effort you put in, whatever it might be, it all takes courage. So as you depart from here tonight, depart from here with courage, the courage to believe in a better way, the courage to voice what you've got to say, the courage to thrive when times are tough and above all else, the courage to know you are good enough. Good night, everyone.